Hey guys, Professor Fat Shady from the University of Trials, already getting a stack of requests from people to do a tutorial on Devil's Beak. This is the uh, extreme track within the new DLC, Riders of the Rustlands. Uh, I'm going to get into this. Now, I've, I, in my first playthrough, which I put up a few days ago, I, um, I did this in like 89 faults. I went back and played it immediately after recording, and you may or may not believe me, but the next time I did it, two faults. Um, kind of got my head around some of the trickier obstacles, um, but I'm just going to try and break this down now. Um, I'm thinking about doing this video in two portions. First in the Pit, the pit Viper, uh, and then I might actually even show you my replay just as a bit of an example. Uh, but then I want to go through and maybe have a crack at this with the Rabbit, because I've heard there's already two schools of thought. That certain people struggling to get through this consistently are having more, um, an easier time with a lot of the uphill sections with the Rabbit. <clears throat> so I might do both of them. Anyway, um, this first obstacle... Um, I think if anybody that saw the inf the first jump of Inferno 4 tutorial I did, this is a similar technique where ideally what you want to do, if you just sort of ride straight up this ramp here, you're going to get nowhere near the height needed to make that gap. What you want to do is lift your front wheel and, accel and continue to accelerate, and by just getting your front wheel out of the way, you can either just land on that platform, so let me show you, yeah, so lift your front wheel up, do a bunny hop, you can either go too far, Consistent way, land on that platform, steady yourself down, and there we go, the consistent way, and he fails. I'm still not perfect at this yet, but anyway, land on there. Try again. Land on there, and just bunny hop yourself up and over. So you can make it up and over there. Um, if you want to do it a bit faster, I want to get those, I get those names off, actually, they're a bit... There we go, and you can either hop and bounce straight over. It's pretty straightforward, you'll, you'll get a feel for it, but the key thing there is just to lift your front wheel up and out of the way. Uh, the second part here, again, a similar problem, in the sense that if you just follow the ramp straight up, you get no forward momentum. Um, similar type thing here, I tend to just do this just with the body weight, uh, so as I start going up the ramp, as my the bike starts forward, uh, basically pushing me up, I lift my body weight forward, and that usually gives you enough to uh, to make it over the the rest of the ramp here. So it's just about uh, sit down, lift your wheel up a little bit, and as you're about halfway up the ramp, press hard to the right, and even just shifting your body weight forward will usually be enough to let you clear that gap and uh, make it up to the next section. And then what you want to do, make sure you land with your rear wheel first, position your bike appropriately and just gently on the throttle, uh, and just steady yourself with throttle control. So I'll do it a few times here. There we go, and then just throttle control there, right? Just take your time, try and not do that. Again, so sit down f and lean forward, and then yeah, as you're in the air, steady yourself and you're up and over. I'll do it one more time. There's a hundred ways you can do it. That's not particularly hard. Uh, and yeah, if, if you're having a crack at extremes, probably not too hard. Um, this one, there's, there's just a slight tricky part for this. The height of this thing is just a little bit higher that if you haven't figured out how to do a good bunny hop, the height of this first little uh, tube thing is just that right height where it's going to be challenging if you haven't got the bunny hop right. Um, what I suggest here, um, because you need to get your back wheel up and onto it, probably start with your body weight leaning forward. It just gives you that little bit more spring in your bunny hop. Still didn't do it. There we go. And that's, that's what you're trying to do. Um, you can probably break this down into two parts, um, just by steadying yourself here and then completing the next section. Uh, or if you want, you can kind of just do it in one fluid motion. Um, yeah, you, I guess, yeah, if you're looking at, yeah, uh, maybe just use the the rest of the ramp here. Yeah, probably don't need to do, probably don't need to get the run, um, probably don't need to lean forward there, whatever's comfortable. The main thing is just making sure that your rear wheel gets the maximum height to get up and over. So that's the tip for that. Um, this one I'd suggest you having your body weight forward, because the key part here is the rotation of your bike in the air. Uh, in the air. What you're looking to do is get your rear wheel to land hard on the uh, on that sort of near vertical slope, but have your body weight high, and have the rider high enough and leaning his body weight forward. So by the time your back wheel hits it, your momentum will carry you up and over. Uh, and the key part there is making sure that you hit with the rear wheel first as I'm about to show you. That was horrible again. There we go. And see that, just you know, by, by sort of forcing your bike hard back wheel in, um, even if you get caught up here, 
just accelerate flat out and you'll usually catch yourself. Um, from here, pretty straight drop down. That's it. Uh, this one, the tip I'd give you here is not jump the first barrel section. Uh, just accelerate, lean forward, lean back slightly. And, I mean, even that, that was... I didn't even really do much and I got over it. Uh, seated from here, the key part and what, what to watch out for is that bomb. And that's probably the only way you'll really stuff this up is if you try, if you, if you do that. So if you have that back wheel hanging down too low, you'll find yourself pretty quickly hit that explosive every time. So stay seated, accelerate, and if you have to, just do a little spring or a little bunny hop off that first barrel. So when your rear wheel comes here, boom, little pop up, and you get up and over. Uh, this one is a pretty stock standard uphill slope. Throttle, con throttle control is what's going to be key. The only challenging part is this barrel in the middle. So what you, I, I mean, a couple of ways you can do it. The way I tend to do it is just, I, I do it in one sort of fluid motion. Uh, if you're finding, having trouble with that, just, you just do the bunny hop. So this is the hard part for me, trying to slow down is sometimes difficult. Anyway. It's entirely possible to do your bunny hop, steady yourself here, and then again, just a bit of throttle, you know, 20, 30, 40% up and over. Um, there are not too many other ways to do this, to be perfectly honest. Uh, you know, you want to go a bit faster, you're welcome to, but it's pretty easy. Next part, um, very similar to a few checkpoints ago, in that because of the height of this, the only way to really tackle this is to ensure that, it, and again, I think this is, a slight, this is a slightly harder variant of that same technique, squirrels looking at me, um, a, a slightly harder variant of that same technique, where what you want to do is perform a bunny hop to get maximum height, but you need to rotate your bike sufficiently in the air so your rear wheel hits and your front wheel and the bike chassis gets nowhere near the box. And what you want to do is hit your rear wheel in, have your body, uh, your rider leaning forward, and what that will do is his momentum, once the rear wheel hits the, uh, uh, the box, the body weight and the momentum will carry you up and over. So again, but this one I would suggest from a uh, position where you're leaning forward, just because that allows you to get that rotation the bike needs to get up and over. So yeah, if you get if you if you sort of hit that a bit too slow, you get hung up here, and there's not much you can do from that. Uh, but there you go. That oh, and I don't really want to slow down up here. There you go. And you don't have to again. Don't have to lean forward. If you find it more comfortable to do it from a seated position, stack of ways you can do it. The main thing is just hit that back wheel. Now I've got two tips here. Um, <clears throat> it is entirely possible, and I'm finding it really easy. If you just drive slowly off there. I say it was easy. No. I want to show you this because it's kind of cool. Just drive slowly off here. Yeah? Rubbish. And this is the hard part, obviously. The time... Ah, uh, that was it. The timing of this is crucial. But... Uh, why do this in the middle of a demo, Fat Shady? Super easy, up and over, because the, the part that I just skipped, I'm going to go back and do it by the way, so I think I'm just going to leave you hanging. Um, that part that I just skipped is one of the more challenging, oh, it's, it's a tricky little section, and if you can find ways to skip tricky sections, you, you, you really should. However, I'll go back down here for the purpose of this tutorial, and have a crack at it. Um, do you know what? I, I'm realizing that from a design perspective, what this track does is effectively shows you a technique, and then later on in the track is giving you a harder variant. I would almost consider this to be the sort of, you know, the so-called beginner version of the S-Ramp, which is coming up in a few checkpoints. Um, and I approach it in a very similar way. What you want to try and do is, from here, is start leaning backwards more than you think you should. And what you want to do is, because what you may or may not notice is that this overhang is very, very close to vertical and almost to the point where it leans back towards you. If you get your front wheel to hit it, the only way your bike is going to go is directly up, and that doesn't give you the forward momentum you need to get over the top of the ramp, uh, or the obstacle. Um, so what you want to try and do is get your front wheel out of the way as best as you can. Uh, the way to do that is to start doing a wheelie at the bottom of the ramp, uh, and then you can pop yourself up and over like that. Um, it takes a bit of practice. Uh, the good thing is, you've got plenty of time, guys. Um, even in the walkthrough that I did, I even did the, uh, the sort of fender hook, so there's a stack of ways you can do this, but I would suggest 
Oh, there you go. So, that's 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 one way. So that's the way I've actually been finding it relatively consistently. Uh, stay seated on your bike here. Press hard to the left as you accelerate, and then put your body weight forward. And you can almost you can almost catch yourself. But that one there was a much better example where I got just that little bit extra, uh, little bit extra lean. Uh, yeah, I'm just thinking maybe. Yeah, so maybe that's the way. You want to get that? Yeah, actually, oh, there we go. That's a better way. Um, and forgive me, guys. I'm, I'm still kind of working out. You got to appreciate because this has only come out in the last few days. To work out, you know, ways to do this really consistently it takes a bit of time. Um, so I guess I want to show you a few different variants, and you can really just experiment and see what works for you. Um, the one I'm trying now is to again by having your body weight forward before you start accelerating. It gives you that little bit of extra push to get your body weight up and over, and then you actually don't even have to accelerate that hard. There you go. So, yeah, a bunch of different ways. There you go. But, yeah, all right, that's definitely the most consistent i found now. By leaning forward, start accelerating. So flick backwards, before, and it's really just, you know, uh, what's that, left, right, uh, in pretty quick succession. But as you can see, the, the front wheel is almost... Yeah, it's just not important anymore. I'm not using it. This one in my walkthrough, uh, first playthrough, I should say, I got a stack of faults only to realize that I was being a complete idiot. It is actually a very easy obstacle if you just take your time, and I was trying to rush through it. Um, I usually just do that very simple drive over here, land in a seated position. Um, you should be able to transition to a... So a as you make this transition... Uh, what you want to do is lean backwards to get your your front wheel out of the way uh, when your bike is approximately uh, parallel to the ramp lean your body weight forward very gently and I'm talking as gently as you possibly can accelerate and that is usually enough to get you up and over the obstacle um, I'm still not doing it consistently yet like I said only played it a handful of times but that's what you're looking for right uh, so simple drive over to here uh, don't Try not to get on that back section, you really want to be on this single piece of sort of aluminium kind of uh, tubing. Uh, lean your body weight forward, and then just slowly go up the ramp. And I can do that you know, reasonably consistently now, just by taking your time. Uh, feel free to do it any other way, but that's my tip. Uh, this section, pretty, pretty basic. Uh, what do we want to do? Do we need to do a bunny hop here? No, um, that's, that's probably the hot tip. Don't do a bunny hop, um, and yeah, just just ride the ride, ride you up the ramp. I don't think it probably doesn't require too much. Yeah, just just take your time. Regular bunny hop. Probably don't need to explain it too much more. Uh, same thing here. Bunny hop here. Um, the main thing is because you know if you you go off the back here, you're into an abyss. So the key part is land with your back wheel, and I'd probably just suggest popping straight up and over. The S ramp jump something. This will go down in history as one that's caused a lot of people grief. Um, it's one of the, this and the next one. Actually, yeah, I was just thinking. They, they, there's sort of three variants of this one in the same track, um, but a similar type of technique. This is this, this is difficult for a few reasons. One, this bottom part of the ramp here, it actually does push back and goes past that sort of 90 degree angle which means that unless you hit this with the right technique, the only way your bike can go is to do a backflip. You, you just can't climb this no matter how, how you approach this. Unless you have the right technique, you're just going to go backwards. So the right technique. Um, as I said in one of the earlier jumps, you need to get your front wheel out of the equation. You need to do whatever you can to stop your front wheel pushing you backwards and get it out of the way. So what I do here is I lean forward, I, li I accelerate while sort of starting to do a wheelie and then quickly press forward but that simple little bit of uh, a shift of body weight and momentum straight up and over like it really is that easy I'm gonna do this a few more times um, I'm still not consistent with it but as you can see just there that was slow um, I, I, f I found the, the reason I struggled with this initially is because I would be accelerating at 100% thinking I just need to go faster to somehow get higher not the case at all it's pure technique Lean forward, forward back, and there you go, nice, hit it consistently already. One, two, that was a, that was a worse example, but you get the idea. Um, start from a leaning forward position, and while you're not completely getting your front wheel out of the way, um, I'm only accelerating 
maybe 50 percent 60 70 percent maybe at parts um and as i'm getting toward the top of the ramp i'm really easing off the accelerator um i'm, I'm yeah really finding that you don't want to be accelerating hard because that top section of the ramp is where the ramp's trying to push you away from or basically it's trying to push you backwards you don't want to be accelerating there you just want your body weight and momentum to carry you up so i tend to find that i'm going faster at the bottom of the ramp and slower to, as i get towards the top and just uh, flick your body weight and you should get yourself up and over um uh, kind of brief, but hopefully that was good enough to explain it. Uh, if it wasn't sufficient, ask me and I'll make a specific video just about this, but for the moment, I kind of want to keep going with the tutorial. Um, <laughs> this is the worst part. Stack of ways you can do this. Um, one of the ways I'm actually finding, I won't say consistent, but I've had decent results, is that. Um, I don't want to hit the checkpoint, but you see there, you can do it in one quick motion, and for some of the guys that have been riding for a while, I suspect I'll pretty quickly figure that out. For most of the people that end up watching my videos though, uh, they're kind of not at a point where they can do that consistently. Um, so what I want to try and do is find an, I guess, a, you know, the somewhat easier version. Um, what that means is getting here. Um, as you can see, this thing is designed so you've got almost no room to, to settle yourself down. But the principle's the same. What you want to try and do is from a seated position here, accelerate you can't lean your body weight forward but what you're going to try and do is go as far to the back of the ramp as possible you want to lean backwards initially so lean to the left get your front wheel up and out of the way and then uh, flick your body weight forward and actually use your momentum because you can see the jump is more than 90 degrees you need to use your momentum to carry up and over um, and to maybe get out the fapping technique uh, which I've shown earlier if you need to nope nope oh Nope. There you go. Off the, come on. Uh, I guess. Alright, so, um, I've got, I've got to do it more times. I think people are going to complain. I've done this before where I go, that's the, I think on Rocket Rage's tutorial, I was like, that's the hardest jump in the game, but because I did it easy, I won't teach you it again. And I kind of got into trouble from you guys. So, I'll do it again. Um, same type of thing. Sit down here, up and over, um, yeah, lean left, uh, left to get your front wheel out of the way. That's that's the crucial part, to be honest. And then, yeah, that, uh, that fapping technique. So effectively, what you're doing there is holding accelerator down 100% while. T so as soon as you get your front wheel up and over a ledge, and as long as your back wheel is slightly higher, you know, or even in line with your front wheel, um, hold down accelerator and tap X on the uh, Xbox controller or square on the PS4 controller repeatedly and as fast as you can. Uh, use the buttons as opposed to the uh, left trigger just because it'll actually be, a, I guess, a faster response and a, the, the effect is amplified. Um, it's a bit of an exploit of the physics, but uh, effectively what it will do is help you raise the back wheel up and over and help you get over those ledges. Uh, let's try once more time, maybe. Um, actually, no, and there's probably another old, a variant of this where you could probably use that fender grab I've shown you as well. But you don't need it. Um, it's just about, it's again, it's all just about that. Yeah, see, that was too much. Um, it's all just about technique. Uh, get your front wheel up and out of the way. Uh, the rest of it should follow. And repetition. Practice, practice, practice. There you go, that was a nice easy one. So there you go. Um, Hopefully that helped, guys, because I know that's the one most people are struggling with. Um, from here, uh, just because of the height again, I tend to find uh, leaning forward just helps a little bit. Plant your back wheel there, and then up and over. I'll do it a few more times. 100 ways to do this. Uh, combination of throttle control, a good bunny hop. Um, that technique there, actually, is very important. If you haven't figured that one out, where you, as you're in midair, to be able to, you'll see, I go in there and I kind of slam my back wheel back down. That's something I've been teaching, and uh, you've needed to know. I didn't invent the damn thing, but you've needed to know since uh, forever with Trials games, and it's that where you're up in the air, it, it, it just increases the friction on the back wheel, it allows you to reposition the bike um, where you're in midair here, and see, yeah, it lets me rotate the bike and reposition so when I land, I'm in the optimum position to keep control of the bike. See, like that? Um, practice doing that a million times, because if you haven't figured that technique out, you're going to struggle in just about everything else. 
So anyway, that was my 95 fault run of uh, uh, 96 fault run of Devil's Beak. Uh, that's a tutorial. Hopefully that helped. I love this little penguin shot. I won't watch it this time. Um, now, what are we, 20 minutes in? Let's keep going. Um, I'm going to now show... Okay, all right. Let me... Let, I, I get asked this from time to time as well, to actually show replays. I mean, I could show one of these genius guys that do... You know, Big Shot Rob. Freak, dude. But I'm not going to show you. As much as I give you a massive shout-out for being freaking awesome at this game, um, I want to show people my replay because it's not perfect. It has a few ugly bits in it, but it'll give you an idea of, I guess, how I'm approaching this so far. I think I've got this down to one fault, so we'll just watch this real quick. And then what I might do is get into the rabbit. So here, yep, yeah, so I took the slower approach on this one. Really slow approach. There you go, front wheel out of the way. Land on the, yep, yeah, throttle control there. Nearly went in the fire. Horrible. So like I said, so get that back wheel up and onto that platform. Now I'm just showing off. Yep. That was horrible. Do that one again, Fat Shady. It's funny, I, I, I can usually get to one, two, three faults on these tracks pretty quickly. Zero fault, either I have a lucky run or it takes me a long time. See, stuffed that one there. Probably have a few attempts at this. Ah, oh, no, there we go. But same, see, see that? You get the front wheel out of the way. This one I, oh, I still have trouble with. Yeah, yeah, let's have four attempts. Why not? Come on. Ah, three. Not too bad. And that's a good thing about this track. It isn't brutally hard because you can recover from some of these things. I mean, some of the tough extreme tracks, you really can't recover from stuff. See? Stuffed up there, but you can recover it. And that's the thing. Because faults is more important than time, um, it's worth... Like, you know, from a, if you care about the leaderboard position, which you should if you're a trials rider, damn it. Um, yeah, the, the faults is much more important uh, than anything else is on this track. So make sure you get your faults down to zero before you really worry about your time. Um, as you can see, really struggling with this section still in my sort of clean runs, but take my time. <laughs> Came very close to faulting there. Anyway, so that's that. Um, yeah, let's go. So I'm going to try it again now with the rabbit. Um, there's a lot of uphill sections on this, and it makes sense then, with the rabbit having so much grip uphill, it makes sense that uh, it is going to be helpful for some players. So there was a bit of debate on Reddit. If you get a chance, uh, r slash trials games is the subreddit. Get into it. Uh, join in. Um, I'm pretty active on there, and plenty of other people are as well some uh, discussion I heard about whether or not this was the right track or not, and that's what inspired me to play it with the rabbit. Um, I'm not going to go through with as much of a tutorial, but you should see the same techniques, and it's pretty much the same approach, except I probably just won't do as... Well, I didn't do a good job. Actually, alright, so let's see if I can beat 96 faults. Because I didn't do a particularly good job. Anyway. Pretty much same technique, but see, like all these uphill sections now become so much easier. The rabbit is a very twitchy bike, so it's agile enough to do this. You know, but it breezes through this part. Like it, you know, it breezes through a lot of this stuff, actually. You know, again, uphill section. I mean, certainly the, the rabbit's strengths are in its uphill... <sighs> I'm pretty rusty with the rabbit, by the way, but yeah, the, the rabbit's strengths are absolutely in its ability. Ah. And its ability to do awesome uphill stuff. So yeah, stuff that up again. Got front wheel out of the way. And what did that what did that fat shady guy say? He said to do that. He's so helpful. Now this is the only problem. It's such a it's so, um, yeah, you need, oh, it's so twitchy. There you go, but totally possible. What am I on? One fault so far. Nope, 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 okay. But as you can see, like, I'm not struggling anywhere. So if, I mean, 
see what you're see what you're more comfortable with. I mean, but I would say, um, and again, the the discussion on Reddit centered around the fact that people are saying there there is a optimum bike to do this on, and that you can sort of do this in forty odd seconds on the pit viper or something, and that may be the case. But if you're not at a point where you're you know at that level yet, um, you know if you find this to be an easier bike to use that kind of stuff for instance go for it it's a it's a viable I mean it's a very very viable alternative you know six fault I mean that's probably only about third fourth time I've run that track with the rabbit handful of faults um, and wasn't being particularly careful um, so yeah that's um, that's uh, actually you know what let's give let's give let's give big shot Rob a shout out let's show his replay I know he watches He's a supporter. Come on. Let's have a look at this guy being an absolute freak now. Um, but you get the idea. So there you go. Devil's Beak. Um, very tricky track. Not not that bad when you think about it. Um, but the key technique is there. Having having a go at those uh, uphill ledges where you need to get your front wheel out of the way. Let's watch what he does here. Because he would just be silky smooth. Watch this. So jealous watching these guys race. Yeah. Hop there. Yeah, underneath that. But you'll transition straight from there. Yep, he'll just load there. Yep, skip that whole section. Now this, he's told me this part stuffs him up still too. His ability, like yeah, he does well, but even for him, he said it stuffed up so many good. Uh, what's he? And actually, so far, it's not any particular other. Um, yeah, see it nice and slow there too. Not any particular time savers or anything he's getting. Ah, and there we go, that one too, as I suspected. It's just clean. Big shot, man. Big shout out to you, man, because that's an awesome, awesome run of the track. Um, and that'll only get better. But that was just a clean, consistent, no major issues run. That's Devil's Beak. Uh, that's 27 minutes. That's a way more time than I usually spend. Uh, but we've gone through two different bikes and given you a stack of different tips. Uh, I'll wrap it up here. Thanks for watching. Uh, subscribe. Do whatever you've got to do. Um, give me feedback. Let me know what else you want to see. Uh, I have had people asking me about the challenges in this track. I've got to chip away at them myself. As you can see, I've done none of them yet. This is probably only the second time I've sat down and played the DLC. Uh, so I'll get into this a little bit more over the weekend and make some more of these videos. So thanks for watching, guys. Cheers.